Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. I welcome you this morning to worship here at Ohio Church. It is good to gather here in the sanctuary uh, in God's presence on this Easter morning. And we welcome those of you who are uh, worshiping with us online in your homes. It is indeed a beautiful Easter morning. A couple of announcements uh, just to be brief. Uh, A thank you to all of those who provided uh, flowers for our sanctuary this morning and uh, to uh, Jen Davis and maybe others who helped with the uh, arrangements and the beautification here. Uh, Thank you very much. Also, a reminder to deacons and elders that the deacons and session will be meeting on Tuesday this week. Story time, as usual, is Wednesday morning. Uh, No youth group, no Sunday school today during church, uh, and uh, no youth group this evening. All of those regular activities will resume next Sunday. Friends, on this beautiful Easter morn, I invite you to stand as you are able and join with our liturgist, Brenly Knox, in the call to worship. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ lives in us, through us, beyond us. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Please join me in the prayer of adoration. Life giving God, your promise of newness and rebirth is especially real to us amid the last songs of resurrection.
joy of this Easter Sunday reminds us of God's resurrecting power. Let us confess all that turns us toward death so that we can know the grace of new life through Christ. Let us confess our sin as we pray together, saying, God, res resurrection is not what we expect in our world. On the days of things, life seems to be under threat, and the light of our hope is growing dim. We need the stone to be rolled away again. Forgive us and all who have failed to honor and preserve life in all its diversity. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the promise of the gospel. Jesus came to the earth to reconcile all peoples to God. Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus prays for us. Jesus reigns in heaven for all. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May be seated. Amen. 
Thank you all very, very much. Invite the children to come forward. Sit on the bench, and or when the bench is full, you can sit on the floor. So, have you guys checked out the board? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing, huh? What was your goal? Three thousand dollars, and the board says uh, four thousand seven hundred and seventy-three dollars for your Lenten water offerings. Congratulations! Well done, everyone. Thank you for all of your hard work in that, and uh, to all of the congregation who joined in the joy of giving. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. This is St. Peter Rabbit. I want to tell you a story about a time long ago when, well, when it was Friday. Usually, on Fridays, the people would, well, they would go home in the middle of the day and things would get quiet. In the evening, our family could go out and have greens in the garden without, well, anybody around, any of those people around. Just us rabbits and all of the wonderful evening greens. But on, on this particular Friday, those people did something, well, they did something to the earth. They hurt the earth. They dug three deep holes straight down into the ground. And they planted three trees, one in each hole. And the trees only had two branches on them. And the sky turned dark, and the ground rumbled and grumbled in the middle of the day. It was a dark day. We ran from that place where they had dug the hole to, uh, to our warren, the place where our home is underground. Most of the family went in. I stayed out to watch what was happening. After some time, People came. People came in the evening when they weren't usually there, and they carried one of them, all wrapped in white. And they, they went into the, the big rock. There was a, a hole in the big rock there by our warren. And they went in, and they left the one all wrapped in white laying there, and then, and then, as they were coming out, someone looked at me right in my eyes. And it scared me. And so I ran into our warren. And just then, after I went in, the door of our warren got closed up. I heard a scraping sound, and I looked back up the tunnel and the door was closed over with a big rock. And it was dark inside. But not to worry. Grandfather Rabbit had, well, he had a back entrance for our warren. And so we went that way. But we found that it was blocked too because of the, well, the time when the, the ground had been rumbling and grumbling earlier in the day, the rocks had caved in and our door was closed. So we had no light and no food, and it was dark. Now, dark is not bad for us rabbits, but, but no food and no water 
that was bad. And all that night, well, Grandpa told a story or two, and we slept, and we awoke, and we slept, and we woke. And then, well, I was sort of awake when suddenly the ground rumbled again, but it was different this time. It was different this time. And there was a, a loud crash, and it was like lightning came down through the rocks, breaking things apart. And I looked up the tunnel, and I saw a light coming in, so I ran to the tunnel, and I went out. And there, the big stone was off to the side. And I saw the one who had been all wrapped in white. It was as if he had stars circling around his head. And he smiled at me. And suddenly I felt much better. And then... And then there was another one in white on top of the rock. And people coming... And, and they went in, and then they ran away, and then two, two, two more came, and one went in, and the other one said, Peter, come see, and so I went, <laughs> and so did he, but they couldn't see the one with the stars going around his head, only I could. And he reached down, and he scratched me under the chin and a little bit behind the ears. And I felt real good inside, even though I was still hungry. Because I knew that everything was going to be okay. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior. And that on Easter morning, that first Easter, he rose and that he reigns with you. Amen. 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 You may have a little something and then return to your families. Start over here. There you go. Let us prepare to hear God's word as we go to him in prayer. Divine Redeemer, bearer of life, open us to the wisdom of your word today and enlighten us with your truth. Liberate us from all that distracts us and turns us from your path. Guide us and ground us in Christ's everlasting hope. Amen. We hear God's word on this Easter morn from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at verse 1. After the Sabbath, 
as the first day of the week was dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Now come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was a warm, sunny spring day when the technician came to the church to service the smoke alarms and the automatic call-in fire uh, alert system. There had been a couple of false alarms recently, and the trustees really wanted to get it repaired before the local volunteer firemen thought it was a real fire and went through those old oak front doors of the church with their axes. Freddie was a, an affable, likable guy, probably in his mid-50s. He, he'd never been there before, so I showed him around the 1886 sanctuary, the 1958 basement and kitchen and restrooms that they had for the first time then, the 1993 edition, and we spotted all of the smoke detectors and things he needed to know, answered his questions, and then I took him where the the main call-in panel was located in the furnace room where they also stored their lunar landing-sized Christmas tree stand. I bid him adieu, said I'd be off to have my lunch. He said, very good, I'll be here a while. See you when you get back. About an hour later or so, I rambled back in, and Freddie didn't look so affable. His eyes were about this big. He said, you didn't tell me this place was haunted. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I heard footsteps. The chancel's right above the furnace room. I said, yeah, well, that happens when you're down here alone sometimes. I always just think of it as the first pastor taking a little walk around the grounds in the church. He says, well, I would thought somebody might have come back in. So I went upstairs, and there wasn't anybody You shouldn't have left me alone. I had the joy of pointing out the graveyard behind the church and the pastor's tombstone at the back center. I think his knees were still knocking that night when he went to bed. But he was at one of those places that is what I call a thin place where the veil between this world and the next sometimes is very, very thin. Let's join the two Marys on their trip to the tomb. A 
thin place indeed, where Friday evening Joseph from Arimathea and friends had laid the body of Jesus. The ground trembles. An earthquake. The stone rolls away. An angel in white radiance. Thump. Soldiers guarding the tomb, frozen in fear. And the angel's first words, do not be afraid. Well, in the Greek, it's more like, don't you be afraid. As for you, stop, have no fear. The angel is commanding them to reject their current state of fear. For his news brings great joy. I know what you're looking for. For Jesus, the crucified one. But he's not here. He's been raised. Just as he said. Raised. What does that mean? For us, we know. Resurrection has already happened The stone has rolled away. Jesus, well, not like it was for Jesus to be let out. He didn't need that. But to let the witnesses in. The angel says, come and see. So they do, the two Marys. They go in and they see with fear and trepidation. And that fear suddenly turns to joy, joy, elation. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm especially fond of the line that follows. They left quickly with fear And great joy, minds swirling indeed with an adrenaline rush, a jolt like an earthquake, the thump of an angel rolling away the stone, empty tomb and amazing resurrection news all at once, way too much to process. Scholar Greg Carey writes that in Matthew, the two Marys respond to this whole scene in fear and joy. Fear. Like any good biblical character responds to angels or other divine interventions. Fear is also how mortals respond when we are confronted with some new truth that might change our lives. Fear on its own provides poor motivation for obedience, but remarkably, the combined experience of fear and joy propels the two Marys to run and tell the other disciples. And on their way, they encounter Jesus, the risen one, who says, you need to go and tell the disciples what they were already commissioned to do. They headed on down the way, bearing witness to the risen Christ, spreading the good news. Jesus' command to the women becomes a command to us all. Stop being afraid. God has defeated death. Rejoice and share the good news. Dave was going through a a particularly difficult time. He had moved to this little town in southwestern Minnesota not that long ago, and, and he was just starting to feel like Maybe he was spinning his wheels and running out of gas when, when Jimmy Wilcox said to him one morning, you know, 
deer season's just around the corner. Why don't you go hunting with the boys and me? Dave, not really being a hunter, thought about it a little bit, talked to his wife, and she said, well, yeah, you'd be, he'd probably be good for you, even if you just go sit in the woods a while. And so the first Saturday of deer season found Dave and the Wilcoxes, Father Jimmy, Larry, and Lamont out in the woods. Well, on the edge of the woods, drinking coffee, waiting for dawn to break. And as the dawn began to break, Larry said, you know, I'll go around the edge of the woods and down the side of that cornfield over there. You guys go across here. If I don't see anything, maybe, maybe just maybe I'll scare something up and send it your way. And so off they went. Lamont and Dave just starting out from in front of the pickup. Jimmy saying, you know, my knees are hurting this morning. I think I'll just stay in here where it's warm. Larry circling the far side of the woods. They hadn't been out, but for a few minutes when sure enough, Larry pushed a buck out towards them. He came out of the brush on the edge of the woods and stood statue still not 50 yards away. Lamont whispered to Dave, he's yours. Dave, Dave was actually a pretty good shot, even though he wasn't a hunter. When he was growing up in Pennsylvania, his dad had thought it would be a good father-son bonding thing to go skeet shooting, and so they had spent many Saturday mornings at the skeet range. And Dave was, he was a natural. So he took aim right between those eyes that were staring at him. And just as he pulled the trigger, the duck bowed just a touch and then dropped. They ran across the field, Lamont exclaiming, it's a 10 point. Larry came around, pushing through the bush, having heard the shot, pulling his camera out of his vest, saying, I've got to have a picture of this. Your first hunting trip in a 10-point. And so, in true hunting style, as some of us here know they do or have seen on Facebook or maybe in a, a family album, they placed the rifle across the antlers and had Dave hold the head up. Larry backed up and decided that, well, he needed to flash since it was, it was still gray out and he wanted a good picture. And so just as he, as he took the picture and the flash went off, the buck shook his head, pulled free from Dave's hands, jumped up with those powerful hind legs and took three strides towards the woods and looked back, defiance in his eyes. No fear. The instrument still carried across his antlers. <laughs> and so it was. An agreement between the Wilcoxes and Dave not to tell this story in town. <laughs> because if there was one whisper of it, everybody would know. The following Easter, Dave was on his way to the community Easter service at his church and he only had to walk a few blocks, which was his custom, even if it was chilly. And that particular Easter morning, there was a fresh inch of snow, as it is wont to do in that part of the world sometimes when Easter comes early. Dave was walking along with his coffee mug when he noticed some rabbit tracks in the snow along the sidewalk, and then some deer tracks crossing, and he thought, hmm, good-sized deer. 
They're getting more venturesome in town all the time. And he was thinking about his tulips that would be coming up soon when, when suddenly out from an oversized U about three houses down stepped a big buck. They locked eyes for two or three seconds. It was an eternity, really. Long enough for him to see clearly that there was a scar between the eyes, just a little above them, where fur had once been. Eyes that looked at him now with fear. No, no fear. Maybe defiance. And then that buck turned and took three big leaps towards the back of the yard and then quietly ambled on. No fear. It was that Easter morning that Dave couldn't help but spill the beans of the whole story to all of those gathered. Resurrection in a new way. His heart lifted as he proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Friends, may we go from this place this morning, not with embarrassment, not with one iota of fear, but with great joy to share the good news of Jesus with those whom we meet this day and in the coming days. Amen. Amen. I invite us to stand as we are comfortable in doing and join in our affirmation of faith. It is a responsive form this morning. We are the church of Easter morn. Out of blackness, a lush green world, flowers in the ice, sun rays in the storm, mustard seeds galore. Our bodies given over to leaping and dancing. Our shouting crashes in upon this world. The Lord lives. We live. Resurrection resounds throughout our community. We are family. We are community. We are the church triumphant. Given the power to change, change things, change lives. Proclaiming to all who will hear, Christ has risen. Shout Hosanna. Christ has risen indeed. Join uh, in the hymn to, of heaven in your insert and on your screen. How I long to breathe in the air of heaven, where pain is gone and mercy fills the street. To look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day where death will be no more. Standing face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. And every prayer we pray in desperation, the song 
Let us pray. God of glory, overwhelmed by your love, ecstatic with your grace, we shout our hallelujahs and rejoice this Easter day. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving for the gifts of this specific day. A wonderful reason to dress up fancy, brightly, to share the look of delight on a child's face when she finds a plastic egg full of candy. Daffodils blooming to trumpet the gospel's good news. Jubilant Easter hymns. Sanctuaries across the world full of Christ's followers. Savior God, you free us from death. Heal and restore us to life. Around us, the world is still so full of pain and suffering. Hear our prayers for those who struggle, for those whose suffering prevents them from rejoicing with us today. We especially remember those who are sick and their caregivers, those who are lonely and isolated, those who are victims of violence, abuse, and oppression. We pray, Lord, for refugees and asylum seekers and for citizens in countries 
where war is present, those hungry for peace. As your people, we gather this Easter Sunday and pray for your continued mercy. The signs of Easter are miraculous, holy God. You have the power to make sense of the senseless, senseless, to thwart violent means of persecution, to resurrect the dead, and to move massive stones from empty tombs. Ground us in this good news, O God. Keep our feet steady on your path. May we always find reasons to rejoice. May we return to worship you again and again and to pray the prayer Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Giving thanks to God, who is always good. Let us gratefully give our offerings to the glory of God and in praise of Christ's resurrection ministry in our midst. We invite the ushers to come forward. Your grace astounds us. Your generosity fills us to overflowing. Accept these offerings as signs of our gratitude and bless our work on Christ's behalf. May we love as Christ loved. May we serve as Christ served. Call us forth into your world, guided by your spirit. Amen. Friends, we will go from this place truly filled with the love of God. We go embracing the grace and the peace that are ours in Jesus Christ and following the Holy Spirit who leads us faithfully each step of our journeys through. As all God's people say, amen.